So I have a new ink to look at today, and uh, it's a brand actually that I've uh, been using for quite a while, and uh, I'm not too sure if I've ever actually done a video about their inks in particular. Uh, anyway, it's a Christmas ink that I got from my daughter, uh, and it's California Teal from Monte Verde. Um, Monte Verde is a funny little brand. Uh, I can get it at my local bookstore here at the at the bookmark, and in some ways, it, it gets overlooked. I don't know why. Well, actually, I kind of think I know why. Um, it's good ink. I, I've liked their ink, um, but their packaging, I have to be honest, leaves a little to be desired. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, certain brands, yes, like Private Reserve, packaging is a little bleh. Nice ink also, um, but it's a big box. So you see a big box and you go, oh, that's a big box of ink. And Monte Verde, uh, it's a small bottle. It's got 30 milliliters of ink, which isn't too bad, actually. Um, so the bottle is well designed. Um, but when you look at it on the shelf, it comes in a little plastic uh, box. And actually, this is one of the things... Sometimes you buy ink and there's a lot of packaging, but they take some care in the packaging. For instance, Dominant Industry. There's a lot of packaging, but, you know, there's like a little pla uh, fabric bag, big box. But there's a certain aesthetic quality to it that's quite appealing, and you sort of want to keep the packaging. What pa fountain pen people do. You sometimes end up collecting bottles of ink and boxes that they come in. Monte Verde, you crack this open, you throw it away, and then the, then you uh, the first thing I noticed, and it's one of those little things that bugs me. There's a plastic wrapper around the uh, cap, and I guess that's also just as a, used as a seal. But you know, the less plastic we can use, the better, right? So I throw it away. But anyway, let's talk about the ink. The ink actually, I'm quite pleased with. Uh, this is a uh, California teal. I hadn't tried it before, and I put it in my um, my trusty uh, Pilot Metropolitan. Um, and what a let's tr do a little writing sample, okay? So, and actually, uh, it's one of those things where it's a good color combination, really. With this, I forget the color of this pen. What is it? Uh, so let's see. Yeah, so it's a very nice green. It's and it you can see the teal. Uh the quick jumps over the lazy dog. The lazy dog. And actually the color of the metropolitan Seafoam? What is it? Uh, I can't recall. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. I'll look it up later. Um, this is actually a really good combination. Uh, California teal and whatever blue this is. Um, it's a green ink, but there's a bit like it. It's a teal. It, there's a bit of blue to it. It works quite nicely with this pen. Uh, so let me talk about Monteverde. Um, it comes with this little information pack with... Uh, booklet, let's say. And so it's the core ink collection, Monteverde USA, made in, oh, made in the EU, um, packaged in the USA. Interesting. I didn't really notice that. I thought it was made in the USA. Um, so there's a number of colors. You can pause and look at that and see what they have. I've tried a couple of these actually there's a couple here that i have that i have tried that aren't on here um i'll have to figure out what's going on um uh, so the monte verde core collection rich in color vibrancy brilliant hues is the central part and the key to our ink story our fundamental collection of stunning fountain pen inks is available in a wide spectrum of nature-inspired colors, ranging from vibrant Caribbean blue to bold Mandarin orange. Each ink is carefully crafted to use in your favorite fountain pens using the ITF technology, aiding in, aiding in the maintenance and by improving ink flow and extending cap-off time 
all the while lubricating your fountain pen feeding system. So, interesting. I wonder if that means it's really good with piston fillers and back fillers, or is it just the feed that it lubricates? Interesting. Okay, so let's try it on a few different papers. Actually, first off, I'm getting ahead of myself. Where is it? I'm going to do a little color swatch for my collection. And I'll do a writing sample on some different papers. Um, so that's actually that. And I have a little... <laughs> the camera's really close today. I'm going to do a little swatch right here. Actually, that's good. That's pretty accurate right there. Uh, and I'm also going to dip a piece of paper and just see how that looks. As that dries, little paper swatch. I'll, I'll, I'll glue that on there. It's more, um, when that dries, I'll glue it on. And actually, you know, it's a generous fill. There's, it's pretty good fill in this bottle. So that's how they get 30 mils in here. I've got um, the dominant industry is actually 25 milliliters, but it's a, a taller bottle and a more fancy bottle. Hmm? in some ways. So, Monteverde. Um, what else? Monteverde makes pens, and I've not tried any other pens. Uh, I possibly am not interested in trying any of their pens. I don't know why. Uh, they haven't really caught my eye, maybe? That's funny. Writing on... You know what? That actually flows very nicely. It, it, I'm always impressed by the Pilot Metropolitan. This has a medium nib. Uh, Pilot pens, once again, you've probably heard me say it before. Great brand. <laughs> I'm no way affiliated with them, don't worry. Um, so anyway, I have a little booklet I'm, I've started. Just the different papers. And what I'm going to do um, is do a little color swatch of uh, <clears throat> so of the different papers and, and I'll do a little writing sample just to see how it works in different papers. Nothing scientific is being done here. I'm just trying it out on different papers to see how it feels. Um, they're all roughly the same weight, all roughly fountain pen friendly except for one or two that are just cheap papers that I, I thought it'd be interesting to try. Um, some of these are my favorite papers, and some of them aren't. <laughs> now, ooh, that really soaked up in that barren fig that I just did. Anyway, interesting. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. That's just a, this is just a photo paper. Quite interesting how that really got pulled into the paper. Usually by now my cat shows up and tries to spill my ink. She's never done it, but that's not to say it won't happen someday. I'm just going to do this little swatch here too to get rid of that, and I'll put that up there. So, let me try to figure out what I'm doing. So, this is um just a little thing I... I'm keeping for my own records. Uh, this is Staples matte photo paper. I did a little art card on the back. I noticed when I did them that it wasn't exactly paper uh, fountain pen friendly. Um, but, but certain ones did work. It's interesting looking at it. Um, as it absorbs into the paper, the edge, I'm seeing a blue. Um, uh, uh, around the... Uh, the green, there's a blue line, right? So that's interesting. And it really sucks into the paper. <laughs> that's probably because it's a non-fountain pen friendly paper and it's a medium uh, nib. I tried this with a couple other pens and it worked actually quite well. It's interesting to see how it's separating there. The, the blue is really being pulled out. 
and it doesn't go all the way it doesn't bleed through that's interesting i thought that would be bleeding through so baron fig i use this as a uh, drawing paper mostly and apologies for the camera jiggling and actually that's quite pleasant right writing on that mm, it's quite nice uh endless recorder uh 68 grams this is probably uh, my next uh, journal is going to be Endless Recorder, Tomoe, Tomo River Paper. Um, that works quite nice. I haven't used this little... Uh, I haven't used my Metropolitan lately, and... Um, this is a really nice combination, actually. I'm looking at it, and I'm liking it. It, it's flowing very nicely with this pen. Hmm. I changed the, um, just to bore you and extend this video even longer, I changed the um, converter from the original one that came with it. I put a Con 40 in it, and it, I think the original is that sort of aerometric one called, I think it's called a Con 20. Not my favorite. Uh, and I think I actually pulled it out and put it on a different pen, if I'm recalling. Now, um, I'm writing on something called G. Lalo Paris paper. Uh, it sort of has a pronounced texture to it, and it it uh, I it's skipping a little bit on this paper, so. That's probably more the paper. This is Pelican, and I got this from Pelican Hub. And um, it's very nice paper. Um, and it's working quite well with this ink. I noticed one time I went to write um, with my Custom 74, and I had a gray ink in it, and it really sort of bled. Uh, I can't remember which one it was. I'll have to look again. But it's re it works really nicely with a medium nib, uh, and there's no real bleeding or feathering or anything going on. Oh, it did bleed through. Huh. Like, that's no more... Uh, I had put Diamine Lilac Night down be before, and it didn't come through, but that really came through. Hmm. But the actual text itself didn't. Well, that's, that's good to know. All right, and this is Rhodia, and just... and I have to be honest, uh, I'm not expecting any problems <laughs> with Rhodia paper. It's so well behaved in uh, many ways, and I'm probably going to flip this over and see it bled through, but I'm guessing not. No, it didn't. You, it, you can see ghosting. Uh, actually, you know what? It did kind of come through in a couple little spots there. <laughs> Interesting. So that's Rhodia. And this is Lystrom 1917. Um, one of my favorite papers. And I use these, this for journals all the time. And it works so nicely. And it, that really flows across there nicely. And it didn't bleed through. Uh, you can see ghosting, of course, but uh, it didn't bleed through. Claire Fontaine, 90 grams per square meter. Um, now that's funny. Right, um, I'm finding a resistance, is all right, almost a drag on the Claire Fontaine hmm. with this pen, this ink and pen. And considering it flowed across some of the other papers so nicely, I, I'm a little surprised actually. It's almost like I can feel a, just a slight, slight drag. It's interesting. Yeah, it, there's a definite resistance on Claire Fontaine. Interesting. And it bled through. So that's quite, uh, you, you know, you're getting ghosting and a bit of bleed through. So anyway, 
there you have it. California Teal. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new around here, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.